Hello and welcome back. I hope you are well. So today I'm going to be taking a look at blending long exposure photographs to create a dreamy but textured effect on moving water. So the first part of this video will be out in the field taking the images and then we're going to come back to the studio and run an edit on the images and create an awesome dreamy but textured effect. Also the images from today's shoot will be available for you to download so you can follow along with the edit. More details on that in a bit. So without further ado, please do consider joining me in the wonderful Peak District National Park. I'm going to talk you through my camera setup. So guys, I've got this amazing uh, scene here in front of me, really rich autumnal colours. got this beech sapling here on the right hand side, which is giving us a bit of foreground interest. Further on into the scene, we've got this cascade, water tumbling over these rocks and some beautiful autumn colours in the background too. So yeah, lots going on in this scene. But what I want to do is I want to uh, create uh, some different exposures for the water and blend those exposures together to create a long dreamy effect but with some texture as well so I'm going to go through the whole process from start to finish from shooting right through to the edit so you guys can follow along so yeah I can really create some nice textures in the water we can get that dreamy look but also retain some of the detail as well it's quite simple to do using layers in Photoshop we're going to be looking at that a little bit later on when we get back to the studio but first of all I'm just waiting for that light just to dip down a little bit more because it's creating some specular highlights in the background and that is uh, essentially making the camera uh, struggle to deal with the dynamic range so I'm just waiting for that light to dip down it's going to make the e more even exposure overall and help us to create a much more balanced image so yeah just waiting for that light and then we'll go through the setup different settings on the camera so whenever you're blending exposures together best thing to do is to make sure your white balance is set to one of the manual settings so I've got mine set to daylight but you could dial in a Kelvin value if you want but you don't really want to have it on auto because it might change you know every time you take a shot it might choose a different white balance setting so it's much easier if you can put it in a manual setting so like I said I've got mine in daylight setting which is uh, looking pretty good on the back of the camera it's a good starting point for my edit as well um, Everything else is in manual too. I've took my image stabilisation off so there's no movement or anything like that in between the shots as well. Everything is nice and solid and locked down on the tripod, which is uh, obviously essential for a shot like this, long exposure. Um, I'm starting off with my ISO at its lowest setting at 200. I've also got the circular polarizer on and I've half polarised the image. So I want to try to get some detail in the water, but not too much, so not too glary. So I've half polarised, and I've also got a three-stop ND filter on. And that three stops of light reduction is giving me a four-second exposure for this first shot. So a four-second exposure with the water moving at this speed is really gonna uh, make a really smooth, milky shot. So that's gonna be my base shot for this uh, entire image. At the minute, there's no wind at all. Just a second ago, when the sun dipped behind the clouds, it got really windy. So I'm hoping, just as the sun sets, we'll still keep it nice and calm, which is really gonna help us keep the leaves and everything still here, especially in this birch tree on the right-hand side. So again, I'm just waiting for the light and then we're going to go ahead and take our first exposure. The light's looking really good now. It's just dipped down behind the ridge line. So I'm going to go ahead and work through these exposures now. So first off, like I mentioned before, first exposure is going to be a four second exposure. So my ISO 200 F8, focus on the rock. Everything's nice and sharp. The depth of field is really, really nice. So I've got a two second timer on just to make sure that I don't get any camera shake while I'm taking this image. So two second timers on. Like I said, focus on the rock. Go ahead and take this image now. I'm gonna try and work through this really quickly because the light's probably gonna change. So essentially now what I'm gonna do, instead of taking the three stop off, I'm gonna leave the three stop filter on, but I'm just gonna increase my ISO by one stop and then 
quicken my shutter speed up by one stop as well. So now my ISO 400 and two seconds. Same again, two second timer. Go ahead, take the shot. That's my two second shot. Now I'm gonna quicken it up again. So I'm gonna boost up my ISO by one stop and increase my shutter speed by one stop. So now I'm at ISO 800 and one second. And now I'm gonna go quicker again. I'm gonna boost my ISO up to 1600, go to half a second. And just for luck, I'm gonna do a quicker one again, at ISO 3200 this time, and my shutter speed is gonna be at a quarter of a second. So, because our base exposure is at ISO 200, that means it's gonna, there's not gonna be any noise in any of the landscape parts of the image. The only bits of noise we might introduce is when we blend in those long exposures. But because we're blending in texture, in the areas that we really want to blend that texture into, I find that the ISO doesn't really make too much of an impact on the image. Because we're dealing with the highlights as well in this fast flowing water, it really doesn't have that much of an impact. And it's far easier to increase the ISO um, than it would be to try to reduce, take off the three-stop filter and mess around with our aperture and things like that. So I found that's the easiest way of adjusting our shutter speed when we're doing long exposures. Now, I'm gonna take these images back to the studio and then we're gonna sit down and blend these images together in Photoshop and create something really special, I hope. So I think that went fairly well. Some amazing colors down there in the gorge, it really is. So first up, if you fancy following along with the edit, you can grab the images by following the link up there in the description as well, which will take you to my newsletter sign-up page. From there, you can grab an instant download of the raw files. I should just say at this point, I did take another set of images as well, just after I finished filming, as the light got much more evenly balanced. I also switched out the ISO 3200 file for a second image, um, which was ISO 6400 at an eighth of a second. I just felt the eighth of a second added in a little bit more texture. Anyway, here's the images in the film strip. And here you can see in Lightroom, um, I've already run a quick edit on the first image just for speed. And I'll talk you through exactly what I've done to that just to make it easy for you if you want to follow along. But feel free to play around with the settings and uh, you know edit as you feel fit. Here we've got the uh, files in the film strip here in Lightroom. As you can see, I've got my information here. This is the first one, the four second clip. Four second one was obviously ISO 200, so this is gonna be our base clip. So we're gonna use everything in this image here uh, for the background. Uh, and then the others we're gonna to use to blend in this dreamy effect, this textured effect into the water. So. Let's just have a quick look um, at my histogram here. You can see, you might have noticed when I was shooting in the field, the histogram was bunched up a little bit more to the left. Um, the image was a bit more contrasting. I was really struggling to retain the details and the highlights. But as that light evened out, I managed to get a much more balanced, evenly spread histogram. So yeah, my histogram is uh, yeah essentially retaining the details in the blacks. I think maybe I just lost a little bit down in the right hand corner, but that's not a problem and uh, managed to save all of my highlights as well. So it's much more evenly balanced exposure. So it was well worth retaking those shots as the light changed. So quickly run through this uh, edit here. I've brought down my exposure just a tiny amount and I've reduced my highlights to negative 51 there just to help retain the, the uh, detail in the, the white bright areas there. Um, I've got my highlight clipping turned on. So a few, uh, see there look you can see whatever's red is uh, clipped um let's bring that back down again but as you can see nothing is clipping so i'll leave that turned on when i'm doing long exposures because uh, it really helps to let you know when you're losing detail in your highlights so i brought my shadows up to plus 44 just to help uh, bring out those details in the shadows and my whites down to negative 17 just to again make these not too bright I've dropped the saturation actually because using that polarizer made it really, really saturated. So I've just reduced the saturation a tiny little bit and I've just added in a little bit of an S curve here. Not much, just a little bit to add some contrast in. And I've made a few minor adjustments to the HSL. I've boosted the green hue just a little bit by plus one 
and I've increased the saturation of the oranges by plus eight, yellows by plus five, and dropped the saturation of the greens to minus one, and also the luminance of the greens to minus three. So very, very subtle changes, but just trying to accentuate the autumn feel, but feel free to play around with those as much as you want to. Now, in the detail section, I've taken the sharpening off. If you follow my videos, you'll probably know that I do my uh, sharpening in Photoshop. It's uh, much better to do it that way, I think, for Fuji RAW files. Sharpening in Photoshop is much better than Lightroom. Um, so I'll take my sharpening off here in Lightroom. And uh, yeah, that is pretty much the edit. So this uh, next image here is an unedited file. I haven't done any edits on this at all. And as you can see, the rest of them are the same. So I'm gonna go back to my first one where I've done all of my edits. And I'm gonna hold down Shift and click on the last one there. And then I'm just gonna hit Sync. And that's gonna bring the synchronized settings box up. And all of the uh, boxes are checked that I need to uh, have checked. I'm just gonna click Synchronize. And then that is gonna synchronize my edit from my first image and copy those settings to the rest of the images. Now, I'm gonna do a little bit of a tweak to my ISO 6400 image. Now, even though this is ISO 6400, because I've got such an evenly balanced histogram and I'm not pushing the raw file too much, you can see it's fairly clean, to be honest. But when we zoom in, we do start to see some softness, but not too much noise, to be honest. But what I'm going to do, just to help things a little bit, is just to uh, reduce the noise there a fraction, only a fr fraction, um, just to help re reduce some of that noise in the shadows. But, um, you know, we might not need to do that really. But yeah, pretty clean file considering it's ISO 6400. Had uh, my image been underexposed and I pushed that raw file a lot more, we would have seen a lot more noise. So nailing your exposure is essential but even down here in the textures, I think that looks uh, pretty nice. I wouldn't want to use uh, the high ISO shot for you know, the rocks. I start to see a lot of softness, but here in the water, it really doesn't matter, I don't think. Just my personal preference, though. Anyway, what we're going to do now is select three of these images. Now, when I was in the field, uh, I was doing it in one-stop increments, and I think it's much easier if you do do that, you start... <laughs> You can get a little bit confused when you start to do well, like one and a half stops or two stops or whatever. So I just take a series of images uh, spread over one stop increments and it's a lot easier just to keep uh, control of, you know where you are. So I'm gonna use three of these exposures. The first image, which is four seconds, the third image, which was one second, and this last image, which is an eighth of a second. So to highlight those, I'm just gonna hold down control on the keyboard and I'm going to highlight those three. So we've just got those three selected now. So now what I'm going to do is open these as layers in Photoshop. So what I need to do for this is just right click on my mouse, come up to edit in, and then open as layers in Photoshop. So it's going to open Photoshop up, and it's going to open those three images as layers in Photoshop. We just need to wait for Photoshop to load them up. So Photoshop is loaded now. We've got our three layers. First, what we need to do is arrange the layers. So I like to have my long exposure, my four second exposure on the bottom, because that is the image which I'm using all of this lovely clean detail where the ISO is at its lowest. This next one is my one second exposure. So I'm gonna move that down to the middle shot, which leaves the eighth of a second high ISO exposure at the top. So I'm gonna turn that off for now, that layer. So I'm just gonna click on the little eye icon and turn that layer off, which is just uh, revealing the one second exposure here. So what I'm gonna do, first of all, is uh, before we go any further, highlight all of my layers by holding down control and just clicking on them. And then I'm gonna come up to edit and then I'm gonna to come to auto align layers. I'm just going to leave it on the auto setting and click OK. And then as you can see, that's loading. And that's just going to align those layers for us. Because sometimes when you're changing the settings on your camera, your camera moves a little bit. Uh, Photoshop can align all of those layers. Now, maybe if I zoom into this image on the corner there, you can just see how it's, you can just see a little bit of uh, edge detail there where it's moved. And that is essentially 
how much it moved during the exposure. So not a lot, but definitely worth uh, sorting out. Um, anyway, let's come back over to here and we're going to turn this first layer off like I just mentioned and then on this middle layer we're going to apply a layer mask. So I'm just going to click on the mask to add it to that middle layer. Now at the minute it's white. What we want to do is invert that layer. So I'm going to compress Control and I when I've got the mask highlighted and that's going to make the layer invisible. Okay. So the mask is now completely invisible. So what we're seeing is we're just seeing this bottom layer here, which is our long exposure. So now what we can do is grab a brush by pressing B on the keyboard, and then we want to use a white paint. So at the minute, I've got mine selected to black. So if I press X on the keyboard, it's just going to swap them over. So whenever you want to change color, just press X, providing you've got black and white selected. So now when I paint white onto my black layer mask, that's going to uh, make everything in that layer appear on the image. So we can start to paint in some texture. So I want this foreground area here to be quite textured. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select uh, an opacity of my brush around about 35%. And then I'm going to start to paint in some of that texture. And as you can just see now, that texture is coming back into these areas here and uh, starting to look really nice. I'm going to do the same over this side. And now I'm going to be doing this fairly quickly, guys, you know, just for the speed of this video. But, you know, you can spend as long as you want to on this. So that's that's looking nice. And then I'm just going to paint in a bit more of that slower shutter speed on these bubbly bits here just to make that look a little bit more crisp. That's looking pretty cool. And I'm going to come up here and I'm going to paint in a little bit more of that texture around this area, too which is nice. So that is uh, pretty much it for that mid layer there. Now I'm going to turn on my top layer, which is my really fast exposure, my eighth of a second exposure, and I'm going to add a layer mask to that layer as well. So highlight the layer, click on our little mask, and now we need to invert the layer to make the layer invisible. So you press Control and I, that turns that layer mask black. So now we can carry on as before with our brush, our white paint, and then we can paint in some more texture detail to this image. So I'm going to zoom in, and I really want to work on these areas in the waterfall here, and I'm going to paint in some of that lovely texture there where we can just see the, the droplets of water just with a little bit of movement. And as you can see, I've got that pasty set to 35, and I'm just painting those droplets in, and that's really nice. And see this big blob of white here? Um, which really, really smoothed out. I'm going to start to paint in some of that detail back into this area here. And this is where this uh, process really comes into its own. You can really start to see those details creeping back in now into those areas that are just a complete blob of white. I'm really not that keen on the, you know, that in long, long exposures. I can also uh, add in some details into these areas here as well. And just, you know, make this look a little bit more textured. Uh, you can spend as long as you want on this, guys. I'm going to do this really quickly, obviously, because I've only got a few minutes left for this video, otherwise it's going to be too long. But you get my drift. Um, I'm just going to zoom out a little bit and then come down to my foreground here, actually. I'm painting some of that lovely texture here again. I really want to make this area texture. And I'm just building it up, you know, with that... 35% opacity, you can really see where you're going with it. And again here, it's really look at that lovely detail coming back in now. You can see all the little ripples. It really helps to lead the eye into the scene. That's fabulous. That's nice. I'm just being careful not to go over the rock detail and stuff too much with this one because obviously it's a, a higher ISO and we don't want to make these areas soft. Look at that lovely detail in there, that's great, isn't it? Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that now. Um, what I'm gonna do is just flatten my layers. So I can press uh, Control and Shift and E on the keyboard. That flattens those layers, that takes that into just one solid layer. And now I'm gonna apply my sharpening. Like I mentioned before, this image is unsharpened. So I'm gonna duplicate my layer by pressing Control and J on the keyboard. 
come up to uh, filter, sharpen and sharp mask. And uh, my sort of default sharpening for my full resolution images for my Fuji files is around about 130. Um, but, um, this one looks just a fraction too sharp at that. Um, probably 120 looks a little bit better. So I'm gonna click OK on that. And that's really sharpened all those details. And you can see all that lovely detail down there now. Now, because I've sharpened it, any noise that was present will be sharpened as well. So I'm just going to come in and have a quick look at it. But that looks, uh, yeah, looks clean as a whistle. I'm not worried about that at all. Perhaps a little bit there, look, we can perhaps see. If you did want to mask out any sharpening, you can just add a layer mask to that. And uh, this time, swap your paint to black and make sure you're painting on your mask. And then you can just paint out the sharpening. See that noise just re gets reduced there. You're just painting away that sharpness you just put back in there. So, yeah, you can be a little bit selective about it. If you think there's anything that's too sharp in the image, again, you can just paint out that sharpness. Maybe this background naturally should fall out of focus a little bit. So maybe we could just uh, reduce that sharpening just by, you can see on the uh, layer mask there, we've just got some light grey areas. That's because we've got our opacity set to 35%. So, yeah, pretty easy stuff, I think. Um, at this stage now, I might do a little bit of cleanup work to it. So uh, see this little branch here. I might just take that out. Uh, any little bits and bobs that I'm not completely happy with, I'll take out. And then when I'm done, I'll flatten the image again. Control, Shift and E. And then come down to Save. So don't click Save As, um, as that's going to save it. Um, you want to click Save and that will take it back into Lightroom. I've already done this. So this is my completed image. Now I've cropped this as well. I'll just show you what crop I've gone for. I've gone for a 10 by 16 crop, you can see there. And um, because there was some highlights up here and uh, just where the embankment ends, and I just wanted to take those out of the image. And I feel it's more balanced at a 10 by 16. So I've also just cropped in a little bit from around the edges to remove that bit where we align the layers. I've just got rid of those bits as well. Now, I always do my cropping when I take the image back into Lightroom from Photoshop. That way, if I want to change it at a later date, I can do. I also uh, do any like vignetting or any shading to the edges of the image after I've taken it out of Photoshop as well, just in case I decide at a later date I don't like those. And I have done that here with a graduated tool. I've just darkened that area there and I've also done the same on that side. So, you know, feel free to have a little play around with that if you want. But uh, yeah. This is our finished image. I think it looks pretty cool and I really like the, the textures there in the water. Really nice. Definitely adds a little bit more impact to the image and takes away that white blobbiness that you get when you do long exposures. So guys, I do hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please consider hitting that like button. If you think others might like it too, please feel free to share it. If you fancy seeing more content like this, feel free to subscribe if you've not done so already. And yeah, until next week, guys, have a great week and I'll see you next Thursday. Take care.